So let's start off with the first game I got laid out here, man. We got in Baltimore, we got the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, the new look Ravens. Now, uh, Odell Beckham is listed as questionable for the game. He messed up his hamstring in practice, uh, which tells you Odell is fully back when he's listed questionable. And they'll be going up against CJ Stroud in his first NFL game and the Houston Texans. I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go Ravens, man. I think it's going to be an easy win for them. I think the Ravens are going to be a team that a lot of people are going to enjoy watching. I think this is going to be a very competitive division in the AFC North. I'm really excited to see Zay Flowers. I think he's one of the guys that I was looking at in the draft. If the Bears had an opportunity to get him, uh, he'd been a god of light. But I just feel like this is going to be a very bad season for the Texans. I don't think that they I – I can't even name a wide receiver on them. I don't really know uh, how well uh, D'Amico Ryan is going to do as, an, as a first-time head coach. Um, so it's a lot of question marks, man. I think they're gonna start the game off with, with, with a thrashing in this one. So I'm gonna go with Baltimore. Yeah, I agree. I got Baltimore. I although I am higher on the Texans than you are, I think CJ Stroud is gonna be really good, and I think he's gonna show some flashes uh year one. May not be week one, but um I, I think he's definitely gonna be solid this year. I know they got I forgot his name, so it's um I'm not gonna say that, but um <laughs> as, a wide, as a wide receiver, uh they drafted him from Houston. Um, he's a rookie. Oh, uh, Tank Dell, Tank Dell, yeah, Daniel yeah. Tank Dell, yeah, yeah. CJ Stroud, you know, requested that they draft him, and they, you know, went ahead and did that. And uh, so I think the Texans are going to be solid, but I think Week One, I definitely got the Ravens. I think Lamar's going to, uh, they're going to throw it. He's going to put on the show. Same. I'm going to put a little bit more respect on the Texans as well. Damian Pierce, I think he's going to get a lot of reps. I, I like <laughs> him to have a good season. Um, also, I think uh, CJ Stroud's going to have to lean on Dalton Schultz, who's new down there from Dallas. I, I like, I kind of like that veteran presence there for him. So uh, I do think Baltimore's going to win, and I don't think it's going to be close. But I got to give the Texans um, their props because they're, I think they're going to try their best. I agree with y'all. So that is one of my plays. It's in the parlay. So the Ravens are uh, favored by nine and a half points. I think they win by seventeen or more. Um, this game is perfectly set up for Lamar Jackson and the new look, you know, offensive side of the ball for the Ravens to uh, show up and show out. Um, the Texans will be missing their starting safety, Jimmy Ward. And, you know, for everybody who knows football, Jimmy Ward was a key contributor for the Niners and D'Amico Ryans at safety all the, you know, these last couple of years. Um, the, and, you know, it's uh, rookie quarterbacks on the road in their first start. That's tough. Uh, yeah. Baltimore is going to be a very tough place to play. And the Texans will be down three of their five starting offensive linemen, including their, you know, newly signed, you know, uh, right tackle in uh, Titus Howard. So um, I think this game is going to get ugly. Um, so, you know, I'm going to ride with the Ravens. And, you know, that is one of my plays, uh, the Ravens minus nine and a half. Okay, cool. Um, next one, big AFC North matchup, man. Uh, in Cleveland, in the dog pound, we got uh, D. Kelly. And, yes, I'll be calling him for the remainder of the season. Just want to let y'all know right now. Uh, D. Kelly, uh, Deshaun Watson, uh, will be having his first full season as Browns quarterback, and they will be taking on the man we just mentioned, the $275 million man, uh, Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. Man, this is going to be uh, – a really good game in my opinion. I don't really know what I think about the Browns because I think it really all depends on how Deshaun bounces back. I don't think that if we just look on the field, and I'm going to keep saying it all season, if we just look on the field before his situation, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, and his only problem was being, you know, being sacked all that many times. So if he can get that back, I think they're going to be a good team and they're going to be up in it. But in this one, I'm going with the Bengals, man. I feel like the Bengals are – we brought up the Bills earlier, Mikey, about them kind of being make or break. With now the contract from Burrow, the clock is speeding up now because we all know that everybody in this core is not going to be coming back. So even though he hasn't – he missed a, uh, all the training camp. He got hurt on day one. He didn't play in preseason. He's a guy – he's a vet. Well, I don't think he really needs preseason. I think he'll be ready to go. And I think the Bengals are going to win in a very, very close game. I'll probably take him by like three in this one. Okay, I hear you. I hear you on that one. Uh, I'm actually on the Browns money line, the Browns to win outright. So uh, that's actually one of my plays, too. Um, the Browns own Joe Burrow and the Bengals since Joe Burrow has been there. Joe Burrow is one in four against the Browns. In four out of five games that he has played against the Cleveland Browns, he has been sacked more than four times. Mm. Um, they just clearly have his, his number. Um, and I'm excited to see what the Browns look like now that kind of 
not that he was a distraction, but Kareem Hunt is gone, and this is solely going to be Nick Chubb's backfield. So I feel like they have a little bit more uh, clarity on how they're going to go with the running game. Um, you know, I, you know, Deshaun Watson was a top five talent, you know, before everything, you know, went down, like you said, Scott. So I think uh, this is going to be a big bounce back, for you, bounce back year for him. They add Elijah Moore. You got Amari Cooper. You got a full off season with Amari Cooper and Deshaun Watson to build that rapport. They're playing at home. And like I said, they have a great, you know, track record against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I mean, against the Cincinnati Bengals. So I like the Cleveland Browns to win this game outright. That is one of my plays. Um, I just think there's still some uncertainty with, uh, you know, Joe Burrow's calf. This is, you know, obviously he's going to be out there for the first time all, all season. You know, he hasn't stepped, you know, on the on a, on a field, you know, as far as in the preseason game. So uh, I'm riding with the Browns in this one. Yeah, you know, in the battle of two of the most mediocre cities in the Midwest, I might have to go – with Cincinnati, man, I think Joe Burrow comes out like I know you say he's one in uh, well, yeah, one in one in four against him uh, so far in his career, but I think they're gonna come out on Sunday and really light it up. So, I got a uh, Cincinnati. I'm with you. Also, I can't actively put my interest behind that nasty man. So, <laughs> Cincinnati, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough. That's a that's a tough one. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. Um, football anymore, in my opinion. <laughs> um, we're gonna go to the next game. This one is uh is, is, a, is a skip game to me. Uh, Vikings open up their season at the crib against uh Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think Baker Mayfield is, is god awful. Uh, I don't really have like anything else to say about him. I think the Vikings will run up a check on these niggas uh on Sunday, which Bears need to win because I think all teams have a chance to be one and oh in the NFC North. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the, with the Vikings in this one. Is the game where's the game at? It's in, in Minnesota. Minnesota. It's in Minnesota. Yeah. If it's yeah. in Minnesota, I, I like Kirk Cousins. Like, I it's crazy. Like, but that show quarterback, it found me saying, you know what? Like, I think he's a dickhead, but Kirk Cousins is not that bad of a guy. Like, it's that like, quarterback show on Netflix that really. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it did a really good show. Like, I watched it and I was like, you know what? Like, I don't, I don't, like, like, it. It. I don't dislike like this guy. You know? Nah, no, no, no. Personally, optimized by Kirk oh, Cousins. He takes, yeah. he tucks his kids in the bed. He reads some Bible verses. Like, yo, this nigga's Bro, not bad. To be that rich and he's driving like a Ford excursion or some <laughs> shit. I'm like, hey, I'm listen, man. Way. He's got millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, and he dresses like my abuelo. Rest in peace. I, I respect <laughs> the man. I respect him. Yeah. Like, like when he had uh like the, the cribs he had and all that. But no, anyway, I got uh Kirk Cousins in the Vikings. I, I think yeah. the Vikings will take care of business at home. Same. Yeah, I'm gonna ride with the I'm gonna ride with the Vikings. It's it's a fishy line though. They're only favored by five and a half. You know what I'm saying? And they're at home, so it's a little fishy. Something yeah. things that Something make you up. wonder, especially they're at home. Yeah. Things that make you wonder. I mean, the Bucks defense still with Vita Vea, and you know they're still they might be tough. Uh, but I still got the Vikings at the end of the day. Baker's the just terrible, like Scott said, bro. Like I just, yeah. you just bad, oh, Mike Evans. Another, I'm, I'm, he's gonna be on the trade block by by. Uh, by trade deadline, like look oh, out Mike, for a yeah. team to be able to scoop him. Like if 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 Pat keep throwing to, I was about uh, to say if Pat to, you know, to, to hall monitors, like he, he might be looking at uh two guys. Who I think are gonna be on new teams, wide right receivers by trade deadline. I think Devontae is gonna join Rogers in in, in New York, and I think that Mike Evans might join Pat, uh, uh, Patrick in um in Kansas what City. What does right? contract look like? Is he locked in? That was locked in. I think they just resigned Godwin like last year. Yeah, they they resigned. They paid Godwin over Mike. So, yep, yeah. yep. Um, let's. If you love field goals, this next game is for you. Uh, Saints at the crib opening up their season against the Tennessee Titans. Resent that. <laughs> <laughs> As a guy who has seen more football, more field goals and touchdowns in his football life, I know when a when a, when a field goal game is afoot. This is one of those. Um, the new look Saints with their quarterback Derek Carr hosting Ryan Tannehill uh, and, you know, pretty much the same team that they had last year with the addition of DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I'm going to go with the Saints in this one. Um, I don't I don't really like anything about Kansas City, not Kansas City, but Tennessee. Uh, I do think it'll be a close game, but I'm going to roll with the Saints in this one. Yeah, I like the Saints. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like the Saints, man. I think this is Playing in the Superdome, um, I think the Saints. The Saints actually have the number one easiest schedule, or the uh, number two easiest schedule in the NFL. Um, they play in a terrible division, and I think this is a. I think this might be an easy game for them. 
Yeah, you know, like you said, bringing the check down God to team him up with Slant Boy, I think, you know, it's, they're going to put some numbers up out there in New Orleans in those home games. And it's always a tough place to play. Um, I still, I, you know who I picked to win the division, but I think on Sunday, the Saints are going to take care of business. I just, my team is just kept catching so many strays right now. You know, <laughs> I heard you just call that man Slant Boy. That's who Slant I Boy. Mean. The God, uh, Slant Boy. He has one route and he runs it very well. But hey. one of the greatest Twitter nicknames ever was Slant Boy. <laughs> yeah, I got my Saints to do what they need to do. Of course, I'm a little biased, but I mean, Tennessee does not instill any sort of fear into me, especially first game of the season in the Superdome. That, nah. It's, it's Saints by 10 points. By 10 points. Um, we're going to go to another NFC South game. Uh, we got the Atlanta Falcons. By the way, if you want to preview that game, there's a new episode of Kings Landing out right now on the Barber's Channel Network. We got the King brothers, Brian and Jared. They'll be breaking down everything from this upcoming game and the entire season. So stay in tune with them. You want more in-depth breakdown of that game. But this will be our first look at Bryce Young. Uh, hopefully he doesn't die behind that offensive line uh, in, in the first <laughs> quarter. Uh, I think I'm going to pick Atlanta to win this one, man. I, I think Atlanta's an interesting team because they've got everything they need but the quarterback. And us as Bears fans, we know that pain all too well. Uh, I don't know how bad Desmond Riddle will be, but I just don't think he'll be good. But I do think there'll be enough to beat the Panthers. I think the Panthers will be a very bad team this year. And I'm not just saying that because I can't wait for the Bears to uh, cash in that money in the bank in, in uh, April of next year and get that draft pick. But I just think it's going to be a bad team. And I think that the Falcons will win, but I do think it'll be a close game. I think a lot of NFC South fans will be close because it's a terrible division. Yeah, for sure. They're about to have a mid-off. Like that game is that's definitely like fall asleep on the couch by like seven minutes in the second quarter. <laughs> um, I really hate that Bryce Young is getting his first career regular season start. Um, likely without Adam Thielen, without DJ Chark, which is a terrible situation. They say they're not going to give all the snaps off to Miles Sanders and they got to spread it out over the course of the season, but I really don't feel too optimistic about this plan to send your brand new franchise quarterback into battle with literally nothing positive going for him. Terrible offensive line, no offensive weapons. It's going to be ugly. Ugh, tough scene. I got to go with the Falcons, unfortunately. Yeah, the Falcons Welcome. are back on. <laughs> fuck them fuck them all right i had to watch I'm, I'm i'm 34 years old i've had i don't know how many years i've had to watch my team play without wide receivers a fucking quarterback at the number one position fuck them this is what they get give us that top three pick yeah. I, 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 bryce bryce reminds me a lot of uh of drew Brees with his size and you know how and so with that old line i think he really is gonna struggle um I think the Falcons are going to beat them by two touchdowns. Like, I think a lot of yeah. people, we, we're putting such an emphasis on Desmond Ritter, and I get it because you do need a quarterback, but Arthur Smith runs the ball. Like, they run the ball. That's why they drafted Bijan. They still got Tyler Ajir, who rushed for, I want to say, 1,200 yards last year, something like that. you got Cordell Patterson. Like, this is a team that I think, with the personnel they have, they're going to be tough to defend a lot of weeks because you got Drake London on one side. you got Kyle Pitts on another side. Like, they have – offensive weapons so it for desmond you just kind of just don't turn the ball over like you know we know you hate telling the quarterback don't lose me the game but until we can see what he does as a quarterback i know arthur smith is gonna run the ball and like that's just gonna open it up for him so the potential is gonna be there for desmond to be all right and i think week one because like you said i think carolina's terrible uh this year so i got the falcons by two touchdowns definitely man i agree i agree with you i got uh i got atl um and I don't think it's going to be close. Yeah, I, 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 I'm with all y'all on that, man. Let's go to the AFC South. Uh, another quarterback debut in Indianapolis. Uh, Anthony Richardson, Indianapolis coach, will be hosting the defending AFC South champions, Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence, them boys. This is going to be a blowout, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a blowout. If you are in Indianapolis, you plan your trip to the mall in Sizzler. Uh, mm -hmm. By the end of the first quarter, because this one's going to be a wrap. Uh, we're going to see Calvin Ridley. He's going to go off. Uh, I think that defense is going to eat. I think Anthony Rich is going to throw a couple picks. I really do. I think it's going to be a big, big win for the Jaguars. Man. I'm going to bed. Yeah, bro. Everything you hear makes you want to root for Anthony Richardson. And I hope he's, you know, ends up okay, but they're going to get smoked. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really high on the Jaguars this year. Um, I think Calvin Ridley is going to come back and show you, like, He's one of the best receivers in the league. Like, I think route running wise, he might be the best. Like, 
there's not too many out there better than him. I know Bear fans, we were hoping his brother, you know, you know how everybody tell you the little brother's better than the little brother be terrible. Like, I feel like Chicago, we had to do that like four times, like him, the T brothers, like it was a lot. But I think Ridley's going to really show out this year. And uh, I got, I got the Jags. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I got the Jags. The Jags are uh, minus four and a half. They're in, they're in the, uh, they're in the parlay of the week, so I'll give that out later, the full parlay. But I got the Jags money line. Um, I do think Anthony Richardson could pose some problems for Doug Peterson's defense um, if they, you know, use him on the outside, kind of use some of his legs. He is, um, you know, he is mobile um, and he's big as shit. Uh, so I think, you know, the Jags have the potential. And I, I can't find the odds. I had it here and I'll find it. But I believe the Jags have the potential to have the best record overall in the NFL this season. They play in yeah. one of the worst divisions outside of, you know, both South divisions are terrible. Um, and I think they will go undefeated in their division um, this year. So I think the Jags get off to a nice hot start. Um, and, and you know, this is, a, this is supposed to be a big year for Trevor Lawrence. And, um, you know, they, they won a playoff game last year. So let's see how they bounce back against, you know, they, uh, a divisional opponent that they should beat. Scott, you're on mute, G. You're on mute. My fault. I, I, I pulled a rookie move. Uh, let's move <laughs> on to the next game. Uh, Steelers, Niners. Um, for this one, man, I think this is the Steelers, an interesting team as well. Uh, I don't trust Kenny Pickett because he wears two gloves, even though I do think he's shown a lot. Um, but they're going up against the uh, San Francisco 49ers, man. Uh, Brock Purdy in a full year. We're going to see uh, if he's really good or not. But I think this will be a good game, and I do think the Niners um, – you know, have a good chance to win. But I'm going to take the upset, man. I'm rolling with Mike Tomlin, and I'm going to roll Kenny Pickett, George Pickens. I think they're going to put up a show. I'm not sold on on Purdy. I'm, I'm just not. I'm just not whatsoever. And I wish all the bad things on earth happened to Kyle Shanahan because him and John Lynch get away with murder each and every year. So I'm going to go with the Steelers up in this one. Not only Steelers, I'm going to go Steelers big. That's my hot take. I'm going Steelers big. How big? By 14. Against the wow. 49ers defense? Against the 49ers wow. defense. Wow. Mm, going, going that's forward. cool. I don't yeah. I, I so. echo your sentiments. Um, they're in the parlay as well. I love the Steelers this week. Um, I love home dogs. That's the thing that you'll see this weekend. I love home underdogs this weekend. Um, there's a lot of unknowns with the 49ers this year going into this season. Um, a lot of injuries. You got Javon Kenlaw injured. You know, Joey Bosa's coming back. You know, uh, he's an animal. And, he, you know, he's worth every dollar he got. But is he ready, you know, to play 70 snaps? Um, you got uh, – they're missing some people out in the uh, – I forgot, the baby Troy Palomalu-looking motherfucker that be running around with his hair all crazy. They're missing him. Um, and Brock Purdy's coming off of UCL. I don't remember, you know, my time, many quarterbacks that have, you know, had to have Tommy John surgery. Um, and this is his first start. Uh, you know, back in the regular season. So I love the Steelers. I love their – I think this is going to be a low-scoring game. I think defense is going to remain supreme. Uh, it's uh, – the Niners are basically – it's like a it's like a three-point game. I think they're minus two and a half on the spread. And you have to take into account for West Coast teams that are flying to play that early game in the East Coast. Um, it's, a, it's a 1 o'clock start here on the East Coast. So that's, you know, damn near a 10 a.m. start. You know, that does have an a, – a, an effect on, on players. So I love the Steelers. I think they're going to run the ball this year. George Pickens is a beast um, athletically. And I, I'm a big believer in Kenny Pickett this year within, you know, playing within the offense. They're going to they're gonna ground and pound you with, with the two running back system they have in Najee Harris and Jalen Samuel. And uh, I like the Steelers as well. Yeah. Yeah, I got Mike T. I got Mike T uh, at home. I'm um... – Big. I was. Uh, I'm not as big on Pickett as everybody else, but I do think he will be serviceable in that offense. And so, with the with everything around him, I think uh, <laughs> coming out, I think they're gonna get a dub to start the season off. Let's see the vision. I just don't think. I think it's gonna be 14, oh, 14 points. That's that's a I'm bold. Big. I'm right. I'm riding my Omar ups this week. <laughs> so you going Steelers too? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going. Uh, okay. I'm going Steelers too. Okay, bet this next I game. Like three. I like three. <laughs> By three? Okay, that, that's 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 a good one. Yeah. Um, this game screens fourteen seventeen, like some yeah. shit like that. Yeah, yeah. fourteen exactly. seventeen energy. 
I'm gonna go twenty one seven, but we gonna we gonna see how it's gonna roll. Um, this next one is a is a, is, a, is a skip. Commanders Cardinals. I'm I'm going Commanders. I don't think we need any real big breakdown on this one. Commanders DC. Yeah. Yeah. yeah DC. Sam Howell have a game. Um, AFC West matchup: Broncos Raiders. The Raiders are a team that I just I don't know. That's it's a mess, which is pretty much what the Raiders have been my entire lifetime. Uh, the Raiders. I'm going with the Broncos in this one. Uh, it's gonna be an ugly game. Um, but I do have the Broncos uh, winning this one over the Raiders. I'm going Raiders, bro. I'm going Raiders. I just don't I, like I, y'all know how I feel about the head coach in Denver. So I mean, I don't like him that much either. But the Raiders, is, I think I don't. I, think I don't. She, I like. I hate Mini Hoodie worse. Yeah, Jimmy G back with his boy. You know, let's see if they can work some magic. So I think week one, I'm gonna go with the Raiders. I just hope both teams have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm a little sad as a Saints fan that my head coach came out of retirement to go coach someone else. That kind of stings a little bit, but like, you know, um, to be expected because he's a little slithery snake. Um, yeah, I mean, Jimmy G, that's my guy. I got a root for the Raiders. Uh, that's that's really all I got. Love Jimmy G. Yeah. Yeah, I'm riding with the Raiders. I'm riding with the Raiders on this one. I think we're going to get a heavy dose of <laughs> Josh Jacobs um, and and Jimmy G dissecting with you know Devontae Adams and some of those other weapons. Um, I don't I don't believe in the Broncos yet. They're going to have to show me. So uh, I'm 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 riding with the Raiders. The local hour is coming up in about five minutes, man. We've got her power from the bigs on the other side coming up. So we're going to get through these next couple games. Uh, Dolphins Chargers, man. This is going to be a real good game in SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, man. Uh, Tua versus Justin Herbert. You know the story between those two. I'm going to go with the Chargers, man. I think uh, eventually they're going to have to break. I'm a big Justin Herbert guy. Uh, and not that I hate two. I think two is good too if he can actually stand up right. But I think that the Chargers are going to win this one. But I do think it's going to be very high scoring. But I'm going to go with the Chargers in this. Uh, I'm going to go Miami. And, uh, oh, yeah. Anybody in the LA area, if you need tickets to the game, contact holla, me. At, holla at this dude right here. Right there. I got yeah. you. Uh, we got you. Good prices. But no, I'm going to go with Miami on the road. With this one. I, I really don't like Staley. I mean, like I said, I, I'm all for going forward on fourth down and taking chances and things like that. But a lot of his decision making, it just it's, it sets the charges up for failure. And he's done it time and time again. So I'm uh, I'm rocking with Miami. You know, I'm going to rock with uh, I'm going to rock with L.A. Shout out to my guy, Jeremy. Um, I don't think that uh, Miami is going to go into L.A. and get and get a dub first game of the season. I don't I don't see it happening personally. Now, I'm with you on the anti-Staley agenda. I think if they don't do something this season, they got to he's got to go cuz that's oh, yeah. that relationship is done. Um and Austin Eckler is definitely trying to earn his supper. He knows it's a contract year, so he's I I look to him to absolutely eat uh not just this game but this season. So, I'm going Chargers. Yeah, I had tossed and I had tossed and turned with this game. I was leaning Miami for a while. Um, I'm going to be actually pretty big on Miami this year, but I am going to ride with the Chargers. I just think the possibility of the Dolphins playing without their prize free agent and their starting left tackle, uh, Teron Armstead, is huge, especially when matching up against the other Maga Bosa. Um, so, you know, especially going on the road, it's going to be a shootout, but I ride uh, I ride with the Chargers, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see this, no, this new – improved uh offense with uh Keller Moore as the OC now with the Chargers. Definitely. Uh let's uh the next one Eagles Patriots. I'm pretty sure everybody I'm going Eagles, man. Like there's really not much I gotta say about this shit. Okay. I'm going Eagles all the way. Going Jalen Hurts, man. Uh this is a speed round now. Everybody going Eagles? Yeah. yeah. Anti, I'm anti Mac Jones. Anti Mac Jones, me too. Uh Rams Seahawks. Jesus. Uh if that is a that is a uh go to the store game. I'm going Seahawks. Yeah. Seattle, yeah, Seattle. 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 Seattle, big, big Gino. Um, Sunday night football, first Sunday. I can't wait to hear that racist in NBC song come on. And, 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 and I've been uh, waiting on that <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't wait to hear that NFC East game to start it off. Dakota versus Daniel Jones. I'm gonna go with the Cowboys in this game. Uh, just because I don't trust uh, the Giants. I mean, I don't trust neither one of these niggas, but I really don't trust the Giants. Um, 
and it's gonna be at MetLife. So that's what I'm going with. That. Who, who y'all got? Mm-hmm. Cowboys. Uh, MetLife. Yeah, it's at MetLife. Jet Life. I like my bad. Jet Life. Jet Life. Stay there. <laughs> I got the Cowboys, man. Um, I was originally riding with the Giants, but I see now that Darren Waller is questionable with a hamstring. And Damn, hamstrings yeah. are very tricky. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and Wandell Robinson, I believe that's how you say his name right. He might be, he's questionable as well. Um, I'm actually pretty high on the Giants this year because I'm a big Brian Dable fan. I think he mm-hmm. showed he could turn, you know, shit into chicken. Um, and he did that last year, and I think if he plays to Daniel Jones' strength and you got a healthy Saquon back there, they could play some noise. They're tough on defense. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna front on the Giants. They're they're pretty interesting, but I'm gonna ride with the Cowboys just because of the injury uncertainty. Um, and you know, for all the reasons we said, this is a big year for the Cowboys. They have to win week one. By the way, the local hour is like three minutes away. We got Herb Howard from the Bigs. He just pulled up into the room. We're gonna bring him in in just a second. Courtney, who you got? I got the Cowboys. I think they cut look out. They come out looking to make a big statement with this game against another divisional opponent for sure. One hundred percent Cowboys. I know I'm going to regret this. I feel like Daniel Jones is going to make a fool out of me, but I'm going to pick the Giants. I, I think the Giants are going to take care of business. I like. I hate that Waller uh, is questionable, but I do. I, I love uh, their head coach and their offense. So I think you know with Saquon back in the building, happy. I think the Giants are going to get the dub at home. And final game of the week, first Monday night football game. Man, I can't wait to hear Joe Buck and Aikman. It will be at Jet Life Stadium, like Courtney said. It will be Aaron Rodgers' regular season debut. Uh, it is the 22nd anniversary of, of 9-11, so that will be – I know they're going to do the whole spiel before the, before the game. Uh, it's the Buffalo Bills and the Jets. I uh, think for the Jets, this is either going to be a really, really good season for them or they're going to look like the Dream Team Eagles team. But I don't think they get it done in week one. I think Josh Allen comes out, spoils the party. I'm going with the Bills by a field goal in uh, this, this uh, Monday Night Football game. Who y'all got? I got the J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Shout out to my boy Mike, 96. Mike, I, I, got, out my guy, Mike. I got his Nike T-shirt I ordered for him. It's here. I got to give him to him. <laughs> but uh, what is it? Uh. I'm a big fan of the Jets, man. Like, let's be real. Last year, they their defense is legit. Yeah, they have it. They had it. They had everything but a quarterback. Um, now having a quarterback allows that defense to spend less time on the field um, than they did last year. Um, and I think they go ahead and they find a way. And I think the Jets have a big year this year. So I'm riding with the Jets. Like I said, I'm big on home underdogs. That's my other single bet. So if you're keeping track, the only two singles that I'm on are the Jets money line and the Brown the Browns money line. I'm big on. A home underdogs, and I think uh, you know that both defenses and the running game and the quick short passing game will will, will prove uh, prove to be fruitful that day. You're about to pay my rent for next month. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Courtney. Uh, Dante, who you got for we uh, if we wrap this up and we get her? Oh, Jets, bro. I got the Jets. I told you, like I said, it's a lot. It's a lot easier for me to say positive things about Aaron Rodgers because he's not kicking my team's teeth in no more. So uh, <laughs> I think the Jets are going to be a problem all season as long as that offensive line can hold up. I got the Jets. 